Okay, today I'll be talking about septicemia and foals. Um, I chose this topic because I currently do research here at Purdue on treating sepsis in adult horses. However, it's much more common in foals, so that's what we're going to talk about today. So septicemia is also called sepsis. Um, it's basically a general term for the presence of bacteria or the bacterial endotoxins in the bloodstream. It is the most common cause of death in newborn foals. Um, it can affect the umbilical remnants after birth, the central nervous system, the respiratory car system, cardio cardiovascular system, um, as well as these other systems mentioned here. This picture over here um, is showing that the breakdown in within the tissues due to the bacteria, so as you can see the walls are kind of thinning out compared to some of these other ones. Um, it's just again a general term for the bacteria. So the way this works is in foals it's usually gram negative bacteria, so we're going to focus on that. It enters through the placenta, the umbilical cord, or the respiratory and GI tracts, and then the endotoxin that's put off by the bacteria stimulates the macrophages of what little immune system they have to release the cytokines, and then these cytokines activate the inflammatory enzymes. This results in like a large amount of inflammation. So this large amount of inflammation can cause um, impaired circulation as well as capillary leakage and intravascular coagulation, which is basically a blood clot within the blood vessels. And foals already have a decreased immune response. However, if they get this really early after birth, then they have not had enough colostrum, so they don't have enough antibodies, which also causes the bacteria to be able to attack them more quickly. And the infection spreads a lot faster through the bloodstream to become fatal to the animal. So the best way to treat this is to prevent it because after they get it, it's very difficult to treat. Um, so by preventing this, you always want them to be in a clean area, like you're going to put the mare into a clean foaling area very early before their time of foaling. After she foals, you want to make sure you wash and dry the mare completely so that any bacteria that's on her or that is expelled during the foaling process is removed so that when the baby feeds, they have a clean environment. Um, this one was recommended, I didn't find it on like everywhere, but they do say a bottle feed two to four ounces of colostrum before the foal actually stands up. Whether that's feasible in all cases is questionable, but um, if none of the three are able to be done during the uh, foaling process, then you can give the full antibiotics for 48 to 72 hours after foaling, but we don't want to prolong it any farther than that because that causes more problems. So some symptoms. Um, in the initial stages, it can be treated with um, basic medications and monitoring of the baby. However, you'll see depression and lethargy and the foal will lie down a lot more and the mare will seem pretty full of milk due to the foal not wanting to nurse, so she's not completely entering her mammary glands. Um, the severe stages, the foal will no longer know that it needs to suckle on the mother, as well as vasodilation, which is the shrinking of the blood vessels, um, tachycardia, which is increased heart rate. Again, they'll be lying down a lot more, and due to the vasodilation, they won't be able to get enough blood to their extremities, causing them to be cold as well as in the very severe, you get hypoglycemia and septic shock. So we'll go a little bit into what septic shock really is. That is the fatal part of this disease. Um, it's a critical decrease in blood flow, which causes like rapid cell death, and then rapid cell death um, causes death of the animal. There are four categories of septic shock. Um, hypovolemic, which is a loss of circulating volume. Overall, this could be due to vasodilation. Um, cardiogenic is pump failure, failure, so that's usually when it attacks the cardiovascular system. They get this type of septic shock. Distributive is per peripheral vasodilation, which I think kind of goes along with hypovolemic, but they divide it into two separate forms of septic shock. And then obstructive, which is the coagulation of the intravascular system. So I found this scoring sheet, which I thought was pretty cool when I was researching it. So they can actually, after a foal is born and they suspect that it has sepsis, they can use this kind of scoring model to re really like determine whether it is or not. 
So first they look at the history, which is right here, and that's more about like the gestation and like what they saw in the mother. So they'll look for all these specific um, symptoms and rate it on a scale of zero to four. Um, and then they'll also add if the foal was born premature. Then they'll look at the clinical signs of the foal itself. So petechiae are like small bruisings or red like circles on the skin, as well as fever and hypotonia, which is muscle weakness. And then um, anterior uveitis is redness of the eye because it's an infection of the middle part of the animal's eye. So then all of these um, you can kind of score based on how bad they are. And then um, when you add all of this up, you if there's a score of 12 or higher, they can are considered septic. Um, that's including all the data here. However, sometimes you're not able to get all of the laboratory data from the blood, either if they're so septic that you can't get enough blood from them or you don't have the ability to take laboratory data, then you usually consider anywhere between a 10 and 11 also septic. So treating this disease. Um, you always start with antibiotics. Um, for foals, we use penicillin combined with amikacin sulfate, but there are different variations that are used for the different sites affected depending on where the entry point was. However, I will say for adults, you do not use penicillin. Um, you use a more general antibiotic, and we are currently researching the use of stem cells to treat sepsis in adults. So for foals, you also do IV fluid therapy. This restores the tissues that were destroyed, especially if they already went and started to go into septic shock and you had some cell death. Um, another important one is the IV plasma transfusion. Since they were not able to fully get all of the colostrum from their mother, they're not gonna have enough IgG antibodies. So this can increase those amount and allow them to fight off the bacteria on their own. Um, if they get to hypoglycemia, then you want to do dextrose solutions I IV as well um, to increase their blood sugar, as well as a nasogastric tube to give them nutrition and a nasal oxygen support tube to treat the respiratory tract. Um, the red tube in the picture is actually the oxygen tube. Um, the nasogastric tubes are a lot bigger so that you can get more nutrition into them at the same time. So prognosis for this disease, um, as long as you recognize it early, it is a positive outcome, but you will still need to treat them for at least one to four weeks, um, and it'll be intensive, usually quarantine, stuff like that. Uh, the survival rates are 50% to 81% currently. However, if they get the pulmonary disease and it really affects the respiratory tract and everything like that, and they're having trouble breathing, then you're going to have a higher mortality of 35 to 50%. Let's give her a soft round of applause. Questions, comments? Now that plasma transfusion, is that coming from mom or any horse? I didn't specifically okay. say. I would say that if you could get it from mom, that would be the best. However, if you couldn't, then you could probably use it from another animal. I know a lot of hospitals have donor animals, mm -hmm. so it would probably come from one of their donor animals yeah, that, in the hospital. That would be good. And uh, horses are very interested. Somebody probably has got a question. Oh, yeah. How do you get involved in that research? Um, so the question was how I got involved with the research here at Purdue. So my sophomore year, I started doing research with the treadmill um, and the uh, standard rides that we were training for a thyroid study. And then I kind of kept with the same doctor, of Dr. Patil, and he does a lot of different things. Um, and then after I worked for him for a few years, I met a few other doctors. So now I'm actually doing this study with Dr. Taylor in the research um so it just kind of word of mouth i was always there okay but how did you do it initially when you got to campus it's a big place you just didn't walk down there and start you know what i mean yes yeah i googled it 
<laughs> I googled Purdue Veterinary Research Equine. Um, I've always been interested in horses. I've never had any of my own, but I've ridden since I was little. So you got some names. Yes, so I got some names Did and I picked, um, I picked the highest up name and started and worked down from there. So I emailed um, Dr. Patil, who's head of like equine research, and then a few other doctors underneath him. He emailed me back and was like, hey, I just started one here, and <laughs> so I um, started with him. Uh, as I did that my sophomore year, I it I didn't do as much, and then as I worked for him more, he I started doing like um, sample processing and stuff like that. And then with uh, the sepsis one, it's a little bit different because it's very scheduled. Everything is very time oriented and very specific, so mm -hmm. it's over a 24 time period, 24 hour time period. And those are spaced out because we have to actually grow the stem cells here in the lab. Mm, that's, so. that's fascinating. She got her foot in the door and took off from there. So per week, how many hours were you? Um, okay, so I start. We started in the spring, and um, we did horses. So Monday nights we would put catheters in. We would start at 6 a.m. On Tuesdays we would do three horses for treatment. So we have 30 minutes of inducing sepsis in them using LPS solution and then we wait like 30 minutes and then we start treating them and throughout this we do body condition scores and monitor them and everything like that TPRs everything and then um, we treat them with either a placebo or a stem cell treatment um, and then after that for 30 minutes and then we monitor them every hour for like three hours I think and then then it goes to six hours 12 hours 24 hour mark and then so we'd finish that one Wednesday morning, and then Wednesday night we'd put catheters in the next group, and then do the whole thing again on Thursday. Since then, we did that in the spring for about four weeks, and then we ran out of cells, so we had to grow them all summer. And they take a really long time to grow, which is the biggest problem of using them as a treatment. Uh, so, and we also had some setbacks at the very beginning because they're actually grown on a bovine solution and we found out that the horses are actually allergic to that so we had to kind of redo and take that out of the solution we were putting them in so then now we do it like once a month we do three horses because we don't have enough cells at the moment was that bovine serum no yes yeah yes. very common to grow cells like that. yes yeah. and, and it's actually though that bovine serum albumin is collected from fetal calves because mm -hmm. I've been to these slaughter places and I wanted the calf, I wanted the uterus and the calf inside and they go, no, we have to collect the blood from that because that's going to be one of our fetal serum. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, in high concentrations, it's allergic to horses. <laughs> Other questions? Comments? If not,